would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. In 1946, after the end of World War II, the United States Navy conducted an expedition to the continent of Antarctica. It was called Operation High Jump. There, Admiral Richard Byrd, along with ships and men, explored and charted the coast and the interior of Antarctica. And there are old reels that document this. In today's video, we're going to be going over a couple of different sections of those reels, but when we look closely at what was discovered, something gets revealed that not many see. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the four horsemen of the apocalypse from the Bible. Pestilence, war, famine, and death. One thing that many people miss when they read about the four horsemen is that logically you can start at any one of them, and then lead to any other in any series, and it logically makes sense. For example, let's say that there's a pestilence that occurs, a disease. Well, that disease could then cause famine, meaning there wouldn't be enough people to farm crops. Then for the limited resources, that could lead to war, and then war leads to death. Let's say we start over here at death. Let's say there's a huge earthquake. Huge earthquake, and a lot of people die. And then once again, because of the death, there isn't enough people to provide for everyone, and that leads to a famine. And then as people get sick and die from that, that leads to pestilence. And then the fear causes war. And then once again, the war could then lead to more famine, more death. It doesn't matter where you start. You can start with famine, and you can go to pestilence, then to war, to death. You can start at death and war, any order. You can look at an event in history and apply this to. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what this has to do with Antarctica. There have been great moments in history where mankind's development has stopped. Many in the secular science community have used religion to blame as some kind of a scapegoat for this. They say, if we hadn't had religion, we would have had more education, and then we would be more advanced. It's myopic and sophomoric and simplistic to think that way. When you have an end that you want to push, of course you're going to divorce yourself from all reason. One way or the other, this has been our history. You can go back to ancient Greece and find wonderful advancements and people contemplating the stars and philosophy and art, and then you fast forward 500 years and they're barely eking out a survival. Now, what if there was a place on the planet that had been completely isolated from this paradigm? Completely isolated from the four horsemen. Where there had been no famine, 
and there had been no pestilence, no death, no war. Even if the progress were slow, they would be far, far ahead of the rest of the planet. I truly believe this is the case in Antarctica, because we have found things like the Antikythera mechanism, that is thousands of years old. No one can understand how they could have created such a thing anywhere in the known world. We have the Voynich Manuscript. We have the Phaistos Disc. We have many other things that we have discovered that there is no explanation for. How far advanced could they be? Living under the ice. Living outside the paradigm of the Four Horsemen. Now, we're going to, as promised, go through a couple of different sections from this reel that we covered in yesterday's video. Now, you're going to have to bear with me. It's four sections that we're going to cover, and each section is about a minute and a half. But it does reveal this, and it's very easy to miss if you're just listening to the entire 42-minute um, reel. But let me get the microphone adjusted, let me get the camera adjusted, and we're going to go through this. Admiral and the party ride weasels 12 miles south to visit his earliest camp, marked by the radio towers. Little America the First, now 40 feet under the snows of 17 years. And above it, Little America the Second, 25 feet under the snows fallen since 1935. Captain Boyd, United States Marine Corps, ties on a safety line. While Admiral Byrd and three veterans of his previous expeditions watch, Boyd inches his carcass down the old ventilating hatch. It stood 20 feet in the air when it was put up 12 years before. He pokes a stick up as a marker for the main hatch. Now all hands, the Admiral included, will have a chance to go look-see. Below, the old-timers find a lantern that lights at once, and all manner of other gear. For here in Antarctica, there is no decay, no rust, no dust, not even germs. Fruits, vegetables, meats, all good after 17 years. Small wonder Bird preaches that one day Antarctica may be the world's storehouse to keep the seven years surplus for the seven lean years. Bird bringing with him the old corn cob he'd forgotten in 1930 comes. No decay, no rust, no dust, not even germs. Now imagine if that were the case anywhere else in the world, that the natural environment would protect and, par pardon me, prevent such things, how much healthier would people be? They might not be more comfortable because it's colder, but they would be healthier. Now we're going to fast forward from this to another section where they show something absolutely amazing. and warm. On the sunny afterdeck of the Mount Olympus, the expedition's prize penguin catch, the big emperors, are living the life of penguin Rileys. They grow four feet tall, weigh up to 80 pounds, and are the only creatures who live throughout the year on Antarctica. Eons ago, they flew. In time, their wings evolved into swimming fins. Their deep feathers are the warmest known. Their feet, thick leather-like pads. On these, they lay their single egg and tuck it up within the body feathers for warmth, to hatch it. In captivity, they must have their vitamins. Keeping them alive for the return voyage is quite a problem, for their bloodstreams have no germ resistance. Their necks are ball-bearing. Strangely enough, the smaller captive penguins prefer their fish fillet. They won't eat live fish out of a pail. The rockhopper penguins are the clowns of the Antarctic. 20 inches high, cocky yellow eyebrows, 
sassy, and forever hungry. As the men find out, they'll eat their weight in fish every three days. Two points there. They have no germ resistance in their bloodstream. No germ resistance in their bloodstream. I suppose that would make sense if you had never been exposed to them. And just like was said in the previous clip, no germs, no rust, no dust, no decay. And on top of that, they eat their weight every three days. Doesn't sound like they have ever had any experience with famine either. So that's two of the four horsemen right there. Now we're going to jump to another clip where they discover something else that's in just absolutely incredible on this continent. Shelf roughens, dark rocks called nunataks appear above the ice. Then rugged mountain ranges as far as the eye can see. Bunger leans forward in amazement. His eyes have caught a sudden and unbelievable change in scenery. The universal white has turned to chocolate brown dotted with blue. A cameraman goes into action. 300 square miles of land without snow. Land that might be in New Mexico or Arizona. Pictures alone will prove Bunger has discovered a warm oasis in the shadow of the pole. It is for such supreme moments as this that men brave the hardships of exploration. The astounding, undreamed of fact is that they are over a chain of warm water lakes whose shores, except for small patches, are free of ice and snow. Commander Bunger circles the largest lake in sight, five miles long. He comes in to make a landing. Water temperatures must be recorded. Sample was taken. He finds the water fresh, the temperature 38 degrees Fahrenheit. On the shores are vast deposits of coal and of minerals of the utmost importance to civilization. Vast freshwater lakes. Mineral deposits as far as the eye can see. Necessary for civilization. Untapped. How many wars have been fought over resources like this in the rest of the world? Yet here there is an abundant supply. That would be a third horseman. War. No famine. Very little death. Disease. Is it all starting to make sense? We have one final clip and... From there, we will end the video. But Antarctica is a great revelation. Something that is going to change the face of history and change the face of mankind forever. Our men have achieved accomplishments unparalleled in the history of discovery. Our central group has flown far beyond the South Pole, mapped one-third million square miles never before seen by man. Our eastern group mapped 3,000 miles of Phantom Coast and charted 40,000 square miles of coastal ocean areas hitherto unknown. Our western group flying hundreds of air hours mapped the 4,000-mile Sunset Coast made the amazing discovery of warm land in Antarctica. In all, the expedition explored more than a million and a half square miles. Our scientists, by use of the radar magnetic detector, have pinpointed fabulous treasures and resources of great significance for all mankind. The and there was the final piece of the puzzle. Mankind fights wars over treasures over things that he doesn't think he can get anymore of anywhere else anytime soon. We've shown the absence of disease, the absence of famine. All of this in an area that has clearly been isolated. 
from the rest of the world for a very long time. It really makes you wonder if there's something more going on here. Something so amazing and so fantastic that no one on the planet can really grasp it yet. And I will leave it there. I'm sure this video is going to cause a great deal of discussion and contention. Just please be respectful in the comments. That's all I ask. God bless. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable first 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube.
please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much.